Good afternoon. Okay. <laughs> okay. Welcome to my daily broadcast. My name is Barry Selby. I am a best selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert, helping strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. And I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine. And the last few days, I've been doing some pretty strong talks about the feminine, um, in honoring and respecting that, and some of the challenges and opportunities for men and women. And that kind of led on to today's talk. And before I get to that, um, I do these talks every day. Um, originally on Facebook Live, then they go to YouTube, and now they're going onto my podcast. So these are being propagated in different places and populated in different arenas. So if you want to watch the videos, you can. If you want to listen to the audios later, you can. I'm making it available to you. So I do this every day, as I mentioned. This is this is number 395 in a series of talks called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. Yes, 395. So getting closer and closer to number 400. I'm still like wrapping my head around that one. And today's topic is actually, as often is the case, um, inspired by and provoked by a conversation I had earlier with a friend. And this was about, in the sense of being held back from what they wanted to do by their partner. And so the title today is around that theme about do you feel supported in your dreams? Are you feeling like you have to hold back for their sake? Are they not supporting you? You're not. They're not. Um, you're not being. You're not owning your gifts and not living your dreams of the world. And I want to speak to that. So first of all, if you're single, I'm kind of going to say you have no excuse. If you're in a relationship, I would say the same thing. And I didn't title this if he is holding you back or she's holding you back any of that stuff because this is really for both part, both sides of the equation as it were for men and women and in my own understanding of the work I've been doing for the last uh, 11 years our service to the planet our highest calling our mission purpose drive is more important than anything else and in fact to speak to it from a masculine feminine polarity piece for masculine hearted people mostly men as most masculine people are men some masculine people are women we are driven in a sequential format meaning that we must do one thing at a time into if to effect and one of those things for us is purpose in fact the way that one of my teachers put it is that a man's purpose must come before his relationship that's actually that's actually chapter seven in david data's book the, the uh, way is very a man I personally have actually ad ad um, adapted, relined that slightly. Basically said that a man's, I would say, for those people who believe in this sort of conversation, that a man's relationship to spirit, God, per whatever that is, comes before that and then purpose and then relationship. And it's not a matter of priority or a matter of saying which is better or worse. It's more about that when we put our energy and our focus into our connection to whatever our God spirit connection is first, and then we put our focus into our relationship. It's not about you live, you do that fully through all your whole life because you need three lifetimes. That doesn't make sense. But you you build enough of a commitment and practice in that area so it becomes more automatic. So relationship with spirit, whether that's meditation, prayer, going to service, whatever that is, first. Then after that is your own purpose work, whatever that vision, calling, drive is in your life. And then a relationship. The reason being is that you take the pressure off the relationship for your purpose and relationship to spirit. And for most women, that's a big relief. So guys, this is, this is a little little tip, little guys, little advice for you here. The first, the first is relationship to spirit because it's not your, you know, your partner's job to make you, <laughs> to make you pray. It's not, her, it's not her focus to give you that um, insight. Although she might, hey, if your sex is that good, no, I'm, I'm gonna have track. But your relationship can be spirit-filled. But your personal relationship to spirit first. Then you can bring it into your relationship. Oh, and that's the other part. Relationship to spirit first, clarity of your vision and purpose second. And then you can bring that into. Thank you, Tyler. I'm glad nice to have you here. And I was listening to you this morning, so it's only it's a nice um, reversal. <laughs> so, and by the way, folks, if, uh, Tyler Conti, follow that man if you haven't already followed him. The man has got amazing voice, amazing music. I'm a big fan. Um, getting back on track. So, when we have our relationship to a spirit and relationship to our purpose first, our relationship to our woman. And then be complemented by those two things. And so our relationship becomes easier. In fact, what it does, it takes the pressure off our relationship to fulfill those things it's not meant to fulfill. Yes, it's not meant to fulfill those roles. Our relationship to our own 
thread connection channel to God, whatever word you want to use for that, followed by a relation to what we're driven by to do in the world is secondary to that. And then we have room, we have space, we have freedom to be in a healthy relationship. Thank you, loving you too, my friend, brother, indeed. Um, so that's one piece. Ladies, speak to you for a second. You have a gift we don't necessarily have as men naturally. The feminine has the ability to do several things at once fairly comfortably. So what I said about in sequence for men, more linear perp is, is spirit, purpose, relationship. Ladies, you have the gift, the ability to do it all at the same time. But one caveat, and that's, what I, that's really what this title of this broadcast is about. Because for both men and women, I say this way, we're all here for a reason. Let's be, let's be clear about that. Um, and for many of us, that reason is a lot deeper than we think. So what we're thinking we're living in our, our, you know, our work in the world, maybe we've got a nine to five job providing for a family, we think that's a reason for being. Reality is often, more often than not, that's not really our purpose. It's a means to an end, which is providing freedom and income for our family or ourselves. But it may not be the drive that fuels us, that inspires us. It's often not even a career. Our purpose, in a lot of times, is a gift that we deliver to the world. Maybe creative, maybe constructive, maybe it's service, maybe it's inspirational. But something that we deliver. And men and women can bring that. And we all have something unique, desired, um, defining for ourselves, that is a unique delivery and gift to the world. Getting back to the title for a second. In relationships, oftentimes, when one of the partners, again, not gender specific, one of the partners is pulled, fueled, inspired from within to deliver something magical to the world, a gift, a, a drive, a purpose, that may not be the best paying job in the world, for example. It can scare the other partner. And Acting from fear, the other partner may try to knock down your dreams, your vision, your, your, your goals, because they may feel threatened by you risking what appears to be the safety of the structure you've created to follow your heart, follow your vision, follow your dreams into the world, whatever that is. And that isn't an easy conversation to have unless you really um, reveal or bring to the surface what's going on underneath. Because for a lot of people, this is automatic reflex. It's it's um, f it's fight or flight. In fact, it's a fear-based reaction. So if you have a vision or a passion or a drive to do something that's more more important than everything, and again for men, purpose before relationship, then sometimes it can be really challenging for your partner to accept that, because they may not know one what you're driving toward, because you may not know what it is either. And I get to how to fix it, by the way. So they can actually do their best to pull you back from it. They won't necessarily support you. In fact, they may diminish it because they're afraid of losing you. Because they don't know, as because you haven't brought it, you don't explain to them that you're not running away. Because it can feel like that. So, and it, anyway, this works both ways. He and she, because I mean, I'm transposing, but reality is, both men and women can be called forth, inspired, pulled to live their vision. And if their partner doesn't get it, understand it, relate to it, trust it. There's going to be a lot of issue there. So here's a few things. One of which, and I did mention at the beginning, if you're single, this shouldn't apply to you, as in you should be doing it anyway, <laughs> not should. You can do it anyway. I've been living my work so much of my life that I've been single intentionally, so I didn't um, put it at risk for a relationship and put my relationship at risk for my work. That makes sense. So I've been living that drive now for several years because I felt I had to keep doing this to the point where it would not get derail by relationship and also for me I've been grateful enough that it's now visible and clear enough in the world that whoever she is that shows up in my life she's already seeing what I'm doing so it's no mystery to me or her <laughs> so for you if you're in that place the throes of that creative juice the passion the drive for your purpose and calling live in the world it will be I can say this another way it will serve you best and your relationship best if you explain what's going on for you literally, figuratively, figuratively and truthfully to your partner. Now, it may not come across very clearly, but as long as you're telling your partner that this is what's pulling you, what's driving you, that you and explain the best you can, understandably, it may not be crystal clear at this point. I, I know for myself initially that wasn't some, didn't have clarity on this, because then you can actually enroll your partner, not, not like that's the, the goal, but explain to your partner what's happening is not that you're drifting apart from them, but that you're being pulled into a deeper part of your work. 
And then the key question is, will you support me in it? Because a lot of people, they don't even ask that question. They just fear that their partner won't believe them, won't align with them, won't trust, won't trust them, won't support them. They'll just go, I'll just push them away. And so they'll stay separate, which creates all that fear and panic. One of the things I believe firmly, particularly in my own work, is that purpose-driven work is even more powerful when it's supported by the relationship. Not necessarily that both partners must be on the same track for the purpose, although that's really powerful and great if it happens, but that the person whose vision it is that's going forward is supported by the other person as well. And at the same time, the first partner, sorry, the second partner's goal is being supported by the first person too, as in both partners are having the goal supported by the other person. So your partner is your cheerleader for your goals, and you are your cheerleader for your partner's goals. Seems only fair. So having that willingness to support each other's goals, and yes, there is, an, there is a common sense thing here. If you're both working full-time in jobs that pay all your bills and not much else, you may want to put your energy into your goals incrementally, into your vision incrementally, and allow yourself to step into those areas without risking the stability of the relationship, financially speaking. That is a, that is a simple but a vital piece of what the conversation is about. The other part of that, second piece of that is, is can you be selfless in this process? Because it may come up where you feel like you're so driven to your own purpose, you'll say, I'm taking this myself and I want your help, but I don't have any spare to help you. That isn't fair. So be reciprocal, be willing to help each other if you're in a relationship to contribute to each other's goals, each other's visions. Because the, other, the thing about this is, and this is one of the joys, is when your partner shines brightly in the work they're doing and you shine brightly in the work you're doing, for a start, the relationship rocks. Secondly, the partnership can develop a whole new level of respect for each other. Now, I said drop this other piece things that just, just showed up and something I'm aware of, is that for some people, when the vision is that big, the relationship can't contain it. And there are people I know, definitely people I know, whose relationships have, decided, have ended because the vision pulled one of them apart, uh, far apart from the relationship and they had to leave to follow their dream, their vision, their goal. And that's not ideal for the relationship's sake, but for the greater good, it may be. And sometimes it's challenging for us as witnesses of what's happening, and I'm speaking to myself about this one because I know I've been processing this one on a level of range from judgment to acceptance, so I'm going to speak to myself on this one, where I watch people who I have, um, have deep respect for when the relationship ends, I'm, I'm, trying, to use, I'm trying to use simple terms, I'm just going to complicate it with it. There's a feeling inside of me sometimes that it's, it's sad that it happened and something's wrong. But recognizing that when sometimes the vision is so strong for each individual partner that they have to follow their dreams and, dr and their dreams pull them apart, that is the healthiest part, the healthiest choice, that the relationship in fact would have limited both of them. As I mentioned in the title about holding you back, it may not be the other person, it may be the structure of the relationship is not helping. And this is a big piece to swallow. It's one of the things I'm still working on myself with some people I know, watching their relationship transform and change and having been so comfortable in my own awareness, being so comfortable to see them in a relationship that for me was working, I have no idea if it was for them, that when it stopped happening, I was in this place of conflict. And so I'm recognizing myself that in some ways, I may have been the energetic in my own perspective of limiting their possibility. So this gets bigger than just a single relationship, as I mentioned being about if they're holding you back. What if you're limited thinking about somebody else's relationship or somebody else's paradigm or somebody else's vision beside your partner is such that you need to let go of, the, of what you believe to be the truth for them to have something even bigger happen. I know I'm getting very metaphorical and, and, and uh, very meta with this, but, <laughs> but it's, that, it's kind of the conversation here. So let me bring it back to home base. First of all, if you're single and you're not living your work, your vision, your power, passion, your purpose in the world, it's time to start. Now, again, same as if you're in a, in, a, in a relationship where you're both sustaining the relationship financially as well. I'm not saying you should drop your whole business and go into that into your focus on your job. I did that. I don't recommend it that way. Um, but that's the, that's the way I had to do it because Spirit was pushing me that way, I believe. But if you have a vision you're working on and you're doing your spare time, committing so many hours a day or a week whilst you're working full time to keep yourself going financially, then do that. But do it in a way, hopefully, your vision of your purpose, especially if it's a financially beneficial um result of doing it, then it can replace your income. But make sure you're putting energy into it because the energy you put into your vision and purpose 
and actually sustain you more everywhere else in life, including in your job, if it's not if it's not your job. Second thing, if you're in a relationship, same rules apply. If you are in a committed relationship where you both have visions that are either aligned or com or compatible, let's do that, where being together in a relationship will still work and you also want to build your visions and purpose, it may be wise to make sure that you have enough income, whether it's one person working the other person's vision or you're both working and creating your vision in, in, um, in your spare time. I hope you're getting the point here. Work something else that's smart. Do this from a wise place. I'm not saying the way I did it was the wisest. It was certainly has been um, stretching me beyond my comfort zone because I, I jumped off the cliff without any wings. Um, so in that analogy, it's good to start building some wings before you jump. <laughs> it's something that I definitely can recommend highly. It's much easier that way. Um, I've, I've been, <laughs> I've been building them on the way down, which is I know one of these trust talks I talk about, and that's not the, the not the theme of this topic, but it's true from my own experience that sometimes that leap of faith is the journey into knowing that it's going to work. And for me personally, total transparency here, I didn't know until I jumped if it would work. And at times I still have doubts, but at the same time I know I'm still flying. So I'm, I'm continuing this. And, and that's one reason I've done all these Facebook Lives, because all 395, 396 of these are my own self-development process. So thank you for witnessing. <laughs> So having said all that, I hope this has been of use to you. Um, this is this is definitely a topic I wasn't planning to go this way, but it's the way it comes through because these talks are never scripted or planned or bullet pointed. And I hope there's something you can take from this that you can use in your own life and and have a spark to fuel your inspiration. If you want some, I'm going to throw a couple things at you. If you want some help in the area of purpose and clarity, I do have a, um, a homework assignment I gave out in a workshop I taught seven, eight years ago that I'll email you or send to you if you want it. Message me and I'll send you that to you, um, my gift. Secondly, if you are a bit stuck in life in area of relationship, romance, those sort of things, I do offer a discovery session pretty much every day on my website. Actually, the quick link to go to it is barryselby.com, which is my website, forward slash chat. Simple, C-H-A-T. Um, this is one of my daily Facebook Lives. As said at the beginning, these are now appearing on YouTube and on my podcast. That's happening as well now. So you can watch those there on my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby. The playlist is Messages from the Masculine. On my Facebook business page, they collect more um, more filtered, as in there's less other stuff on that page except for this. And also the link to my podcast is there too. So that's barryselby.author on Facebook. And my website is barryselby.com. We can find all my coaching, my uh, online program, my book, all my other stuff. And that, I think, is about it. Oh, and is anybody you should, if you, anybody you think should see this or watch this, please share it with them. And again, if you need help in the clarity piece about relation, about your purpose work, I do have something I can help you with. I do have something I can help you with. Yes, got it. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being with me. Uh, thanks for the love along the way. I'll see you again tomorrow. Um, some other topic, I'm sure. And have a wonderful evening. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. And uh, I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.